Hi, my name is Pat Scallon, and I am a University of Central Florida graduate student. Today I will be presenting a class on selective photocolorization. This class is basically meant for amateurs or novices to Photoshop. If you have a lot of experience in Photoshop, this class is not for you. But if you're someone who just started and you're interested in doing selective colorization, especially in black and whites, this is a class for you. This is what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to start off by showing you how to set up your Photoshop area with all the proper tools and windows in front of you so that way when you start your coloring adjustment, you have everything there and you're not going through different drop down windows trying to find proper tool. Next, I'm going to show you how to select the area you want to color. And from there, we're going to add and adjust that color so you get the proper textures and colorizations that you want. The last part of the coloring process, let me show you how to color multiple areas. Once we have the finished product, we're going to compare it to a similar picture in color. And then I'm going to give you some helpful links to do other things in the Photoshop and I'll give you my email address so if you want to contact me you can. But before we start getting into setting up I want to take a look at the bottom of the screen and you're going to see different areas. Blue is where you're at right now so you can able to contact. At any time you can hit one of those links it's going to take you to that page. So later on when you start coloring and you get a little confused and you want to go back to some place you can select that area and go right back to it. Let's set up your Photoshop area of work. The first thing you want to do is ensure you have the proper colors selected when you start coloring. So you want to go into Image, and then Mode, and pick CMYK. CMYK is really your color spectrum you're going to be playing with. C being cyan, M being magenta, Y being yellow, and K is key, but it's really the black spectrum, if you want to call it that. Next, you want to ensure that you have the right quick selection tool. The one you see there that says Refine Edge is the one you want. Ensure you have that one there by pressing Shift W. And once you have it there, you're ready for the next step. There are three key buttons that you need to know how to use before you start setting the area you want to color. The first is the Add Selection button. This will expand the area you wish to color. The Subtract Selection button shrinks the area down in case you made too large of a size. The third is your paintbrush size. For this photo, I use between a 4 and a 1 depending on how much fine tuning I want to do. Now, to start coloring, I use that first photo you saw in the title page, the Chicago flag. What I did was I placed my cursor in that dark gray area and started expanding out with the add select button brush. Photoshop will try to find the natural lines but sometimes due to pixelation and fades it's going to expand out. In this case Photoshop got a little confused and went all the way out to the top of the flag the white area. In this case, I changed over to the subtract selection and I was able to feather it in to the lines that I could see that Photoshop normally can't. To refine it, I switched my brush layer to a 1 to get close to the pixels I want for a line. Once you're complete with this, you're ready for the next area. Now that you've selected the area you wish to color, you are ready to color that area. What you need to do is go to the right hand side and look at, at the adjustments box and click on curves. This will open up another window. Now you see where CMYK is? Click on that and another window will drop down and so you can pick another color. In this case, I chose cyan. You'll notice the color in the box will change color also. Now, you want to click on that line to adjust the color for what you want it to be. You want to adjust it just enough so you still get some textures in the photo. Color too much, you lose everything. If you don't have enough color, you don't have any color whatsoever. Now, you see I've already adjusted the color that I want. The gray area is now blue. 
but she's not so blue that you cannot see the texture of the flag and some of the flag rippling. So we've just colored one area already. Now you might be wondering, can we do multiple areas? The answer is yes. If you want to do multiple areas of the same color, the first thing you do is close that curves box. Once you have done that, then you select the areas you want to color. In this case, I have chosen all three of these starbursts and refined them to the areas I want to color. I hit the curves box again. In this case, I pick magenta and I play with the color spectrum until I got the proper colors I wanted. And this is what the finished product looks like. Now, to make the flag pop out more from the photo, I decided to color sky a little more yellow and do the, the ground also. Now, this is probably looks a little more realistic because this photo was taken during a sandstorm. If you notice on the other side, this is what the flag looks like in real life. It doesn't look too cartoony in the flag we just photoshopped, and you can see the ripples and the textures of the flag as it flows in the wind. I hope this method helps you in the colorization process. Photoshop can be overwhelming, especially to a new user. To further assess you, I have included some helpful links. The first link shows you how to use the Refine Edge tool. This tool helps Photoshop identify selected edges of a photo that you want to color that it normally cannot see due to pixelation issues. The second link shows you how to colorize vintage black and white photos. These are a little more tricky than the photos I use today. This site gives you some tips to make this process much easier. The third link shows you how to convert your color photos into black and white. Sometimes you have a color photo that you might feel looks better in black and white and this site shows you an easy way to convert. Lastly, since I've been asked about the Chicago flag numerous times, I've included a link that describes the symbolism of each part of the flag. I know it says it's Chicago Motorcycle Guy, but it's a much better site than the Chicago Historical Society site. Well, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. If you have found a better method of colorization, feel free to email me the better way. I'm still learning as you are. This concludes this presentation. Good luck and have fun.